My name is Jonathan Edwards and I'm a barrister at Radcliffe Chambers. I do a mix of work within the Chancery sphere, but uh, primarily I would say I focus on uh, what's called traditional Chancery work, which I'll explain a little more in a moment. And I've been asked to speak to you for a couple of minutes on the question of what sort of cases do Chancery barristers work on? And this question crops up a lot because whereas many kinds of legal work are self-descriptive, uh, chancery is a term that people aren't particularly likely to have come across uh, until they um, are looking into it specifically. What um, appeals to me and what makes this question somewhat difficult to answer is that um, chancery work is a very wide variety of work, uh, but I'll, I'll try my best to summarize some of the main kinds of cases you might come across. If you're a law student, uh, it will tend to be the kind of cases that you cover in contract, land law, and especially equity and trusts. But there are also lots of cases that barristers work on where you're not very likely to have seen anything like them in the law degree course or in the conversion course. Uh, I think you can summarise the, the bulk of chancery work under um, a number of main themes. Uh, the first of these is holding accountable people who have control of other people's property or money. And this comes up in a, a number of contexts. Uh, for example, people who aren't able um, to look after their own affairs, so have someone appointed to look after their affairs for them. Um, also trust funds, um, and a special kind of trust fund, which is the pension fund. This all involves uh, sometimes very large amounts of money. Uh, that are under the control of someone other than the person who they ultimately belong to. Uh, similar is charities. Um, charities are run by people, but they're not run for the benefit of those people. They're run for the benefit of um, the charitable objects. Um, but it can come up in other contexts as well, this theme. Uh, for example, one thing that causes uh, problems surprisingly frequently is uh, house purchases, because at the, around the time the house purchase has been completed, the uh, conveyancing solicitors are likely to receive a large amount of money from their clients uh, and or from mortgage lenders. And that's supposed to be used to purchase the house, uh, but things can sometimes go wrong. Uh, and solicitors sometimes pay out the money uh, too early and then the house purchase isn't successful. Um, so holding accountable people in that situation who have control of someone else's property or money uh, is one of the main themes. Another one, and uh, this, comes up uh, a great deal in traditional work. Uh, so it's the kind of case that I tend to spend a lot of my time doing. Uh, can be summarized as uh, arguing what should happen to someone's uh, property after they've died. Uh, and this includes uh, challenges to the will, uh, or if the will is confusing, or if uh, those things are perfectly clear, but the people who are executing the will are not doing what they should be. Uh, it can get very complicated, but uh, in, in broad summary, uh, that's, uh, that accounts for a large number of chancery cases. The third theme is uh, arguing about what happens when a person or a company becomes insolvent. So obviously there's not enough money there to um, pay out everyone who has a claim. And uh, instead, uh, that has to be sorted out and people will want to get priority for their own claims if they can. Or well, they might want to, if it's a case for corporate insolvency, they might want to try and pursue a claim against people who are running the company. Uh, for example, if they, shortly before it became insolvent, take a lot of money out of the company and used it for their own benefit. A fourth theme is where um, ownership uh, isn't what it appears to be. And uh, this is the kind of case that arises where um, someone is holding property in their name but someone else says, well, it might be in your name, but it's not just yours. It's either uh, it might be mine or it might be both of ours uh, in some shares. And uh, that question crops up quite a lot in a variety of different contexts. Uh, another theme is, uh, and again, this is more on the traditional side, is uh, what happens when people have been working together uh, fall out. So for example, if people are w running a business in partnership with each other, and they've fallen out, and the business needs to be divided up in some way, then um, that's the kind of case, um, tends to be quite a long running case that chancery barristers might work on. Uh, other situations where people are working together but fall out arise with charities, religious organizations, uh, clubs, um, and also um, more commercially um, when they're 
when they formed a company to carry out their business. All of those situations can go sour, and when they do, uh, the disputes that arise tend to be the kind of thing that are worked on by chancery barristers. And the last of the themes, the kind of disputes that arise where um, two people own property near to each other, so they're neighbours, and they're, they've fallen out over something to do with that. For example, disputes about rights of way or rights of light, that kind of thing. So um, that won't have covered everything uh, that Chancery Barristers work on, but I think between them, that those uh, themes give you a rough idea of the kinds of argument that um, Chancery Barristers deal with. And uh, what appeals to me is that quite often these uh, are cases involving ordinary people rather than large entities. And uh, so there's a real human element to them. You can see inside um, people's private family affairs, uh, which can, can be very interesting. Uh, so that's my answer to uh, what um, kind of cases Chancery Barristers work on. Thank you for listening.